Today we are going to be singing a sending forth song that we have not uh, had on our song sheet before. It's called Raining Down. And this song was chosen specifically because we are celebrating a baptism, and so this has water in it. And uh, water is that symbolism of baptism, that initiation into the church. So we want to make sure we can sing this song. So let's practice it. On the back of your song sheet. in Christ. Baptism takes away our sin and gives us new birth in the Holy Spirit. The sign of baptism is the pouring of water. Please stand for our gathering song, Till No We Are Christians. This morning for the repose of William F. May. And today we have the opportunity to give the sacrament baptism to John, second name? Wyatt. Wyatt. Uh, are you ready for this? You, you have been in this school for how many years? Two, so you've been around some time, and you know what you're taking. Good. And thank you for bringing him, bringing him to first to the school, and second to this opportunity for him to grow 
in his spiritual life. Thank you, Mr. Godmother. You know what a Godmother does? Like what? She can tell you, John, what are you doing? She will tell you if you are not going to the right path, she is given the power by God to tell you, fix your ways, do better. Okay? So that's what we are going to do, and we're going to speak about that more later. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us call to mind our sins. I confess to all my God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and words. In what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who gave the priests and Jerome a living and tender love for sacred scriptures, Grant that your people may be ever more fruitfully nourished by your word and find in it the fount of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord says this, I, the Lord God, will look for my people and take care of them myself. As a shepherd looks for sheep that have wandered away, I will search for my scattered people. I will rescue them from all the places where they went on that dark and gloomy day. I will bring them back from foreign countries and protect them on the mountains, in the valleys, and wherever they settle. My people will be like sheep, grazing and resting in good pastures and on Israel's mountains. I, the Lord, all-powerful, will lead them there and watch over them. I will look for the lost sheep and bring back the ones that have wandered off. If any are hurt, I will bandage their wounds. If any are weak, I will help them. I will take good care of my people. The word of the Lord. The response is, proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Sing a new song to the Lord. Everyone on this earth, sing praises to the Lord. Sing and praise his name. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Day after day announce, the Lord has saved us. Tell every nation on earth, the Lord is wonderful and does marvelous things. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Tell everyone of every nation, praise the glorious power of the Lord. He is wonderful, praise him. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. 
Announce to the nations, the Lord is king. The world stands firm, never to be shaken, and he will judge its people with fairness. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus' eleven disciples went to a mountain in Galilee where Jesus had told them to meet him. They saw him and worshipped him, but some of them doubted. Jesus came to them and said, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Go to the people of all nations and make them my disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I will, I will be with you always, even until the end of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Today we are celebrating the day dedicated for Saint Jerome. Have you heard of the city of Jerome in Idaho? Have you? You know, you have been in Jerome? Anybody has been in Jerome here? That's a very close place to Twin Falls. And there is a church there named after Saint Jerome. And what did Saint Jerome do? Did He was a priest in the year 400. And he dedicated his life, entire life, to study the Bible. So he is the first one who put the Bible into a language that most people could read. It was in Latin. You know Latin? Anyone knows Latin? You? No? You do? A little bit? Okay. So you can read the Bible in Latin. Okay. So, so the big help of Jerome is that he was able to bring all the pieces together into one book. It's called the Vulgata, meaning the book with the sacred scriptures put into a language that people could read. So if, you, if they asked you what Jerome did, he said he liked to study the Bible and he put together all those pieces together into one book it's called the Bible. Now, today we have uh, another special opportunity to celebrate. We are celebrating John's baptism. How old are you? Ten? Very nice. You have siblings? Three. Okay. Are they here? Okay. So, tell me in a few words why you want to be baptized. He wants to know God more and to obey God in all his teachings. In all his teachings, you know the, the Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments... The three first speak about God and what our relationship with God. He wants us to adore him only, and we are supposed to respect his name. 
You know, sometimes people, especially adults, they, they put God as a witness of something that is not truth. Is that good or bad? Bad. So you are learning something today. And then in the Ten Commandments, they ask us to sanctify the day of the Lord. And the day of the Lord is a Sunday. So you're going to have to, between your parents and the godmother, be able to come to church because you don't drive yet. Huh? No. Okay. You, can ride now. you can ride the bicycle now. <laughs> So church is important in our lives as, a, as we want to grow and to know God better. And then the fourth commandment has to do with your parents. Yes, they, the fourth commandment says, love and honor your parents. Is that something that is in your heart? You love your dad and you love your mom because they gave you life, and then they have been around to help you to grow in, in, in your human life. So if you get sick, they take you to the doctor. If you are angry, they ground you sometimes. Lay down. I don't know. If they tell you go to your room, you have to go because they are your parents and God put them in charge of you. And the fifth commandment has to do with the fact that we need to respect life. So the fifth commandment is, says you shall not kill. You won't do that and I think you won't. But sometimes in our minds, especially when we grow up, we, we don't like somebody and we do harm to them by way of talking bad about them. That is related to not kill. Because one time, once you keep, you take away the private life of someone, that is bad, right? We are supposed to respect people's private lives. Then the sixth commandment says, respect your body. So you have to understand that eating too much candy is not good because you can get a stomach ache. And if you eat too much, then you're going to have some problems with your health. You need to know what to eat. And then what you drink you have to respect your body by drinking something that is good and is, is, is a nutrient to your body. Seven is something that has become very popular. It says, you shall not tell lies. Lying is not good. Sometimes we use that as an excuse to get out of trouble. Your mom said, who broke the dish? So if you did it, you have to say, I did it, mom. I didn't intend to do it, but I did it. Okay. okay. I remember when I was little, like you, that my mother she found something that was wrong, and she said, if you tell me the truth, I won't do anything to you. And I say, I did it. Guess what? I got grounded. <laughs> so you don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't say something that you are not going to fulfill. Then you need to respect, uh, when you grow old, you're going to have relations with the girls. 
And then you need to respect, if, some, if a girl is going with this, this boy, you need to respect that. Don't get into the relationship. Oh. Huh? Oh. You won't? Well, when you grow old, you, you're going to have these thoughts. And so you better keep that in your heart, that God doesn't want you to mess up with relationships. Okay? And then one thing that is really, really human, we try, we, we get these feelings of envy. So you see a guy, a, a little boy or another boy with a nice bicycle, and you say, I want to have that bicycle really bad. So that's, that's not good. Being envious is not good. So those are the things that God wants you to do. And that, all these things that I have said to you can be summarized in two commandments. Two, love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. And the second commandment is like this, the, the, one, the first one. Love your neighbor. Who is your neighbor? You don't remember? Anybody around you is your neighbor. Anybody who you encounter is your neighbor. And so Jesus said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Do you love yourself? It's important that you love yourself so that you have a, a sense of dignity. But that same love that you have for yourself needs to be exercised with others, and your neighbors are everybody who you encounter. Doesn't matter if the person is poor, if the person is black, if the person is uh, brown, everybody deserves our love. That's what Jesus came to teach us. Now, everybody here understand what I'm talking about? Your son, you see, did you understand what I'm saying? Yes, you too? Everybody who's been baptized understand what I'm saying? Do you understand? Yes? You? Now, do, did you understand what I say? Good. And uh, who are the classmates of uh, John? Please stand. So you are being witness today of something really special. Your friend, brother, is going to receive the sacrament of baptism. And you are supposed to give him a good example of your life so that he can see that being Christian is a good thing. So with this, we are going to begin the celebration of the uh, baptism. And I'll... What, what name do you give your child? John. And what do you ask of God's church for John today? To love him and baptize. Okay. You have asked to have your child baptized. In doing so, you are accepting the responsibility of training him in the practice of the faith. It will be your duty to bring him up to keep God's commandments of as Christ taught us, by loving God and our neighbor. Do you clearly understand what you are undertaking? Yes. Are you ready to help the parents of this child in their duty as Christian parents? I am. So, John, please stand. John, the Christian community welcomes you with great joy. In his name, I claim you for Christ our Savior, by the sign of his cross, 
I now trace the cross on your forehead and invite your parents and godparent to do the same. Turn around. Make the sign of the cross. Please stand. We're going to do the prayers of the faithful. For the unity of the church, that all believers may share in the feast, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the peace among nations, that all people may live without fear, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the physical, spiritual, and emotional well-being of those who are ill, may we heal, may be healed and made whole. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of the Holy, Catholic, Holy Spirit Catholic Church mirror God's mercy in the way they care for one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For John Wyatt, who was baptized today, that he begin life anew with all those baptized in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers said and unsaid, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray that we all renew our bap baptismal promises. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. St. John the Baptist, Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint John the Evangelist, pray for us. Saint Peter, Saint Paul, pray for us. All holy men and women, pray for us. Please be seated. I want to tell you something that you probably don't know: that you belong to the human race. Is that? Something that you understand? No. You, we, are, we humans are different than animals. So you come from the human race. And the human race, according to the Bible, began with Adam and Eve. They are the first, they are the first people God created. And Adam and Eve... They were having a good life, but one day something happened and they disobeyed God. So that was the beginning of us human beings having to struggle in life with different things. We, we, before they didn't have to work they didn't have to be worried about getting sick because God was providing for them. But when you, get, when you do something wrong, there are consequences. And the consequence was you are going to have to work to earn your living. So that's the beginning of the work situation. So you are a member of the human race and you were born with what is called in our Catholic tradition and the Bible, original sin. Original sin comes from your parents, in, in, in the first parents, Adam and Eve, and then the church today 
wants to erase that original sin from you. Is that good? Okay, so you are going to be anointed with this oil, signifying that this original sin is no longer with you. So untie your collar, and because I'm going to anoint you here in the chest. So we do this near your heart so because some, we believe that good things and bad things come from our hearts. So now you are invited to do always good things. Please be seated. We pray for you that God set you free from original sin, made you a temple of your glory, and sent your Holy Spirit to dwell within him. We are this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We are going to bless the water that will be used to baptize you. We ask you, Father, with your Son, to send the Holy Spirit upon this water. May all who are buried with Christ in the dead of baptism rise also with him to newness of life. We are this through Christ our Lord. Now please stand, and we are going to use this occasion to renew our own baptismal promises. Dear parents and godparents, you have come here to present this child for baptism. By water and the Holy Spirit, he is to receive the gift of new life from God, who is love. On your part, you must make it your constant care to bring him up in the practice of the faith. See that the divine life which God gives him is kept safe from the poison of sin and grow always stronger in his heart. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, renew now the vows of your own baptism, reject sin, profess your faith in Christ Jesus. This is the faith of the church in which this child is about to be baptized. So I'm going to ask the same question that we're asked the day you were baptized, so we are renovating our baptismal promises. Do you reject Satan? Yes. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose with the, from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? Please repeat after me. This is our faith. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. This is the faith of our church. We are proud to profess. We are proud to profess. In Christ Jesus our Lord. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Uh, all be seated by you. <laughs> and so now I'm going, to, I've been asking the same question Chris, uh, uh, in different ways. And, I'm trying to make sure that we know what we're doing here. Is it your will that John should be baptized in the faith of the church which we have all professed with you? So, John, come with your parents and God 
parent, and you, you will be here, Jan. You're going to have to bend your head this way so that everybody is able to see you. And, and I'm sorry this water is cold. <laughs> Are you ready? John, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So please go back to your pew, you remain standing, go back. Now, John, because you now are baptized, you receive three things. First, you are adopted by God, our Father in heaven. So you can say, I have a Father in heaven, God. Second, you became brother of Jesus Christ. So you can say you have an older brother in heaven. And third, you can claim that you belong to the Catholic Church. If they ask you what church do you go, go to the Catholic Church. That's what you have to say. Even if you are in Africa, they ask you what church do you go, you say to the Catholic Church. If you go to Germany, they ask you what church do you belong to, you say the Catholic Church. You will find a Catholic Church anywhere in the world. In the Amazon, there are Catholic churches there too. So, so that's not an obstacle for you to go to church. There are Catholic churches all over the place. God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has freed you from sin, given you a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and welcomed you into his holy people. He now anoints you with the Christmas salvation as Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king. So may you live always as a member of his body, sharing everlasting life. So we are sealing no, this is going to be in your forehead. So we are making sure that you remember that your Father in heaven is God and your brother in heaven is. And that, what church do you belong? Okay. This is a white piece of garment. I'm gonna keep it here, and this is for later. John, you have become a new creation and have clothed yourself in Christ. See in this white garment the outward sign of your Christian dignity with your family and friends to help you by word and example Bring that dignity and stain into the everlasting life of heaven. Please light the candle from one of those candles. Come this way. The four of you try to reach the candle. Touch it. Receive the light of Christ, parents and godparents. This light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly. 
this child of yours has been enlightened by Christ. He is now to walk always as a child of the light. May he keep the flame of faith alive in his heart. When the Lord comes, may he go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. The Lord Jesus made the deaf hear and the dumb speak. May he soon touch your ears to receive his word and your mouth to proclaim his faith to the praise and glory of God the Father. Amen. You had put on Christ in him. You had been baptized. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Just be seated. Just keep standing. Turn around. The Ark School of Holy Spirit, I introduce you, the newest member of the Catholic Church. Let us receive him with a nice round of applause. Now we continue with the celebration of the Mass, preparing the gifts. Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Please stand. Grant us, O Lord, that having meditated on your word, following the example of Saint Jerome, we may more eagerly draw near to offer your majesty the sacrifice of salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, you word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as we one voice we acclaim.
please kneel down. <coughs> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May holy, therefore, this case we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given out for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim. Therefore, as we celebrate the death, memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember William, your servant, whom you have called from this life to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a day like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who had done your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and all the saints, who hath pleased you throughout the ages. We may marry to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God. God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Please stand. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. For all who are participating in this Mass at home, let us now pray the spiritual act of communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May this holy gift we have received, O Lord, as we rejoice in celebrating St. Jerome, stir up the hearts of your faithful, so that attentive to sacred teachings, they may understand the path they are to follow, and by following it, obtain life everlasting through Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to have some pictures taken after uh, the final blessing with John and his family and, and some of you. So that is why we don't have the adoration uh, we normally have after the fi final blessing of, of Wednesday morning Mass. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace.